Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good weekend, and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution with the Mighty Jingles. This is about all I really have the energy to do at the moment, a Jurassic World Evolution video, because damn, but it's hot. Uh, it peaked at 30 degrees here in uh, the south coast of England today, and I realise everybody watching this from Australia and Nevada and... Arizona are sitting there thinking, okay, first of all, what's that in the proper temperature? It's 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and now you're all thinking, is that it? <laughs> that's nothing. That's winter here. And yeah, exactly, that's the point. You're used to these kind of temperatures. In this country, if it goes above 20 degrees, it's a heat wave. <laughs> we all start walking around in shorts and t-shirts. 30 degrees is torture. So I've basically just been sitting around thinking, I really don't want to do a video because in order to do a video I have to turn the air conditioning off <laughs> otherwise all you can hear is the air conditioning fan so it's now half past ten at night and it's still around about 28 degrees and I'm like oh, I don't, really don't want to do this but you know got to pay the bills so video time Jurassic World Evolution where were we anyway? oh yeah we were on Isla Matanceros the starting island Getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, so let's head back to Isla Matanceros and carry on where we left off. That's an Indoraptor, by the way. Hybrid. Don't worry, we'll be seeing that later, although probably not today. Well, back on Isla Matanceros, we've just completed the security mission and we've just released the second of our two Edmont... What is the plural for Edmontosaurus, anyway? Edmontosauruses? Edmontosauruses? Edmontosaurus I? Does anybody actually care? I know somebody will, and I'm going to hear all about it in the comments, but whatever, it's done. Next. How about some carnivores? Should we put some carnivores down? Well, I say carnivores, you know, plural. I only have access to the Ceratosaurus fossils. Uh, although you can put two of those in the same enclosure and they will coexist reasonably happily. But what you cannot do is put a large carnivore in the same enclosure as small and medium herbivores like the Edmontosaurus the Triceratops and the Struthiomimus. Well, you can, but the large carnivores will eat them. So, we're going to have to build a separate enclosure, and that's going to require another Hammond Creation Lab and a whole bunch of fence. Now, you see, this is what makes it so difficult to actually five-star Isla Matanceros without leaving Isla Matanceros, moving on to other islands once you've unlocked them researching fresh dinosaurs and fresh upgrades there and then coming back and applying those upgrades to Isla Matanceros. You see, upgrading the park facilities themselves to five stars is relatively easy. You just have to ensure that there are enough hotels to look after the number of guests who want to visit, you've got enough eating and drinking facilities available for them, enough places for them to spend their money, and enough things to keep them happy. Security isn't always clean or easy, but it is always hmm. necessary. We'll take this mission. Photograph a dinosaur eaten from a feeder. Yeah, that's nice and simple. But getting the dinosaur rating of your park up to five stars when you only have access to four dinosaurs? You see, there are a whole bunch of things that go into making a five star dinosaur rating for your park. The number of dinosaurs in the park. And that's relatively simple to do. You just need space. The welfare of the dinosaurs in your park. And again, that's relatively simple to take care of too. Just make sure they're fed, they're not ripping each other apart, and any that die, you dispose of the bodies quickly. You don't just leave them there rotting in plain sight. But the variety of the dinosaurs available in your park is also a very, very big factor. In fact, it's probably the biggest factor. And all I can actually put into this park without leaving Isla Matanceros, going to another island, building a new expedition centre, and opening up new dig sites are the Struthiomimus, the Triceratops, the Edmontosaurus, and the Ceratosaurus. So with only four different types of dinosaur available, the variety rating in this park is never going to be good enough for me to get five stars based on just the number, welfare, and variety of dinosaurs alone. However, there is a fourth factor, and that's the star rating of your dinosaurs. And that we can play around with. There are two ways of increasing a dinosaur's star rating. The simplest way is to tinker with their genetic code. Once you have 100% of a dinosaur's genetic code, you can start tinkering around with the genome and adding things to the mix that will make your dinosaur 
more popular with the crowd. Every time you do that, however, you reduce the viability of the genome. Now you can compensate for that with the upgrades that you add to the Hammond Creation Lab. However, since we're still on Isla Matanceros, the starter island, the only unlocks that you can actually get here for the Creation Lab give a maximum of a 10% boost to the viability of anything you incubate. However, you do have three upgrade slots in the Creation Lab, so in total you can get a 30% boost to the genetic viability of anything that you incubate. 30% isn't huge, but it's all we have to play with. With a 30% bonus I can probably afford to modify two, maybe three parts of the genetic code of any dinosaur that I already have at 100% viability. Of course at the moment I don't have any dinosaurs with 100% viability and I need that 30% buff just to ensure that all of the eggs incubate without tampering with them. I've got 81% of the ceratosaur genome however so I can afford to do a little messing around. Adding the robust digestion 1.0 genetic marker is going to increase the resilience of my ceratosaur, so it'll be less susceptible to disease, for example. And it's only going to drop the viability down to 80%, and I've got a 30% bonus, so this is a guaranteed incubation. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cook ourselves a ceratosaur. And the ceratosaur's not bad. It's sort of like a bargain basement Tyrannosaurus rex. It's about half the size of a Tyrannosaur, but, well, beggars can't be choosers. It's all that I have available at the moment. So the Ceratosaur is going to have to do. What I can't do is just bulk my park out with a whole bunch of carnivore enclosures and stock them full of Ceratosaurs. For one, that's a huge waste of space and I don't have an awful lot of space to mess around with here. However, there is good news. Unlike certain other carnivores, the larger carnivores, like Tyrannosaurus rex for example, Ceratosaurs don't really mind too much in the way of competition. You can have two of them in the same enclosure, and they won't fight each other. The thing is, I kind of want my ceratosaurs to fight each other, and not just because it's cool to watch. You see, the final way to increase a dinosaur's star rating is to have it win fights. Any dinosaur that kills another dinosaur in a fight gains up to half of the defeated dinosaur's star rating, and adds it to its own. So the plan is to breed a whole bunch of ceratosaurs, stick them all in the same enclosure and basically just sit back and wait until the dust settles. <laughs> and it'll be cool to watch. And I'm pretty sure I just heard the microwave ding, which means we've got our first carnivore ready for release. And this is the Ceratosaurus. You know, for the first carnivore that we have available, it's not bad. Of course, it only has a star rating of 84, which is pretty crap. Although it's better than any of my herbivores by far. So we're going to go ahead and cook a few more of these. A carnivore, I see. This time, a ceratosaurus. There are distinctive spines that run down its back and a bladed horn on its head. <laughs> Just what you don't want to run into when you're out there alone or in a group. Actually, with the release of my first carnivore, we're at around about two and a half stars, and I'm pretty sure I unlocked something at three stars. Now, oh, actually, it has a rating of 89. That's still terrible, but it's going to get better. I'm pretty sure I have the cash available to incubate one more, and introducing a second Ceratosaurus into the park may be enough to actually push me over the three star rating. The thing about carnivores is that they tend to be a bit more fussy about their surroundings than most of the herbivores, although some of the herbivores can be incredibly picky as well. The Ceratosaurus is relatively easy going, however, it just requires a bit of forest cover in order to be happy. Now be careful where you're putting the trees down, because the guests need to be able to see the dinosaurs, so don't put any between the viewing enclosure and where you're going to expect the dinosaur to be feeding, for example. So. Yeah, this should do, and she seems to be quite happy, her comfort level's back up to 100%. You can see she can actually tolerate quite a large population of other dinosaurs in the same enclosure. And there's a bit of wiggle room there on the social bar as well. Now you might think population and social are the same thing, they're not. The population bar indicates how many other dinosaurs your dinosaur is comfortable sharing the same pen with. 
the social bar tells you how many other dinosaurs of the same species your dinosaur is comfortable sharing the same pen with. For example, the Tyrannosaurus rex is quite happy to live in an enclosure jam-packed full of other dinosaurs, as long as it's the only Tyrannosaurus rex in that enclosure. Put one more T-Rex in the same enclosure and they're going to fight. The Ceratosaurus, however, isn't quite that fussy. You can have two, possibly three of them in the same pen. And here is Ceratosaurus number two, this time with a star rating of 112, thanks to some more tinkering that I've done with the genetic code, specifically the savannah pattern for the skin. Your park is nearing guest capacity. Hey! Now build a hotel so even more can stay. The more guests in the park, the more money in the bank, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll get on to that in a moment. However, the good news is that I've just unlocked Isla Muerta, the second island available. Introducing the second Ceratosaur has bumped my overall park rating up to three stars. What do you think of that, Jeff Goldblum? Yes, Site C, more commonly known as Isla Muerta. A newly developed island. The name, roughly translated, and I do mean roughly, the island of the dead. Fitting. Humorous, even. So, we're on the way. Unfortunately, my island rating has just dropped back down under two stars because now I need a hotel. The park now has poor visitor capacity, so that's easily fixed. I just need $750,000. Might have to wait a little bit though, because I've got an entertainment mission to incubate and release a Ceratosaurus, which was what I was planning on doing anyway. Now that I have more of the Ceratosaurus genome unlocked, I've got 91% viability, new genetic markers have become available. So, we're going to go ahead and apply some of these, being careful not to lower the viability of the egg down below 70%, while at the same time adding enough new mixes to the dinosaur's genetic code to boost that star rating as high as I possibly can. And that seems to be it. So that's a 133 rating Ceratosaurus. But the more that you tinker with the genetic code, the more expensive they become. That's only really an issue at the start of a park's life. Later on you'll be making more money than you know what to do with, but some of these dinosaurs can get incredibly expensive. A fully pimped out Tyrannosaurus, Indominus Rex or Indoraptor can set you back $17 million. That's not something we're going to have to worry about for quite some time yet, however. For now, the Ceratosaurus is going to do. And it should never cost us more than a million. I'm definitely going to have to do something about the park capacity, though. It's all well and good having these superstar ceratosaurs running around the carnivore enclosure but if there's nobody paying money to come and see them i'm kind of wasting my time so as soon as i have three quarters of a million dollars lying around with nothing better to spend it on i really should think about building a hotel hotels are good though there's really no downside to building more hotels they increase the guest capacity of your park which means there are more mobile happy meals wandering around cheerfully taking selfies in front of the carnivore enclosure stuff on their face full of dino burgers and spending money on tack and junk in the gift shop. But for now, we're going to complete that entertainment mission, or at least the first stage of the entertainment mission, by introducing a third Ceratosaurus into the carnivore enclosure. And there she is. So, Isaac the arsehole. I incubated your Ceratosaur. Every guest is what we strive to maintain here on the island. We do that by making sure their needs are met. In a way, it's kind of like taking care of the dinos. Just with more demands and less understanding. <laughs> Am I right? Shut up, Isaac. Right, he wants us to construct a live bait feeder. Alright. Huh? There are two different types of carnivore feeder. There's a basically tray of meat which is what's been keeping the Ceratosaurs happy until now, but you can also construct live bait feeders, which basically pop goats into the enclosure with very, very short life expectancies. They don't provide quite as much nutrition as the regular bait feeder, but they do satisfy that all-important carnivore instinct to chase things and crunch them <laughs> between their jaws. So, here's one very unfortunate goat. And there's the mission complete. Right, Isaac, what did we get? 
a million dollars, and the Draker X is now available. So that should be a new fossil dig site where we can get the genetic code for the Draker X. It sounds impressive, but really it's a bit crap and a huge pain in the arse. So I'm not even going to bother making any of them. Well, maybe I will, but they really are a pain. And we're very, very close to a four-star rating, which will unlock is Nublar, which is the sandbox island. While Isaac the arsehole is being an arsehole, do you see what's happening to the ceratosaur over here? Yep, she's seen the goat. Cover your eyes, kids. Cruelty... No, too late. <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be another go along in a minute. Ah, uh, anyway. Oh, I built a hotel, by the way. There it is. So that's got the the island's facility rating back up to five stars. There we go. And it's just the dinosaur rating. Hmm, great variety, great welfare. But the dinosaur rating isn't even three stars. We're going to have to introduce some gladiatorial combat into the mix to boost the star rating of these carnivores. And for that, we're going to need more carnivores. And three ceratosaurs is about the limit that you can have comfortably inside the same enclosure. So if I introduce one more, they're going to kick off like it was closing time at the pub on a bank holiday weekend. This time, I actually have 100% of the ceratosaurus genome, so I can afford to do a lot more tinkering. And I now have more options. All of the different genetic markers have been unlocked once you reach 100%. And I've also been spending time and money in the research centre unlocking things that I can actually populate those genetic markers with. The trick, of course, as always, is adding as much to the mix as you can get away with without reducing the viability of the egg below, in this case, 70%. So, that's just about it, I think. I think we're at 82% viability. That will drop it down to 77, but it will boost the rating up to 147. Yeah, that's no problem. We'll go with that. Of course, all of this tinkering has raised the price of a ceratosaur up to not far short of a million dollars per egg. Of course, these things don't live forever. Asset requiring collection. One of the chicken lizards has popped its clogs. There it is. Strathiomimus has died of old age. You don't really want to have dead dinosaurs lying around in your park, for a start. <laughs> While its star rating was never very good in the first place, it's now at a star rating of minus three, so we're going to need to dispose of the bodies. So we've called in a sky crane from the asset containment unit to get rid of any unsightly decomposing dinosaurs. Anyway, Ceratosaurus number four. This one is a bit of a badass. A series of small sometimes random, chaotic, if you will, steps, and you've just taken one. Step. Right. There are now four ceratosaurs in the same enclosure, and at the moment, they're quite comfortable. But as soon as number four enters, the social bar turns red. And this enclosure is not big enough for the four of them. No enclosure would be big enough for the four of them. So right now they're all sizing each other up, thinking, who could I take in a fight? <laughs> and there is going to be bloodshed. It's interesting actually watching their behaviour. I mean, nobody knows how dinosaurs actually, you know, acted in real life. But you can see them splitting off into pairs and giving each other the eye. I've got a fresh herbivore ready for release in the other enclosure, but I don't really want to miss this in case it happens while I'm elsewhere. Oh, and it looks like another Struthiomimus has popped its clogs. I should probably go over to the other pen and at least arrange for the disposal of the body. And oh, I see we've completed it. Ah, there it is. Four Star Park is Le Noblar unlocked. That's the Sandbox Island. No point in going there just yet, however, because while you don't have to worry about money, on Isla Nublar, everything is free. The only things that you can actually build on Isla Nublar are things that you've unlocked on other islands. So all I would be doing there would be duplicating what I've already done here. So we're going to call in the Sky Crane and get rid of the dead Struthiomimus. And while we're waiting for the Ceratosaurs to kick off, we're going to release 
some Hyangosaurus. These are Chinese dinosaurs. Herbivores related to the Stegosaurus. And I unlock these by completing reputation contracts and raising my reputation with the various different divisions. Science, Entertainment and Security. And they're not bad. They're quite happy to live by themselves, although they certainly appreciate a little bit of company, so I've made two of them. Oh, hang on a second. Fight's broken out. Let's quickly switch. There it is. And off they go. Now, which ones are these? Three and four. So these are my two toughest dinosaurs. Hmm. It's not ideal. I was kind of hoping that... The two toughest ones would pick the two weakest ones, but then again, I guess they're going for the ones that they perceive as the biggest threat, which is each other. See, these were the latest two that I incubated, so they've had more genetic modification. Then again, it doesn't really matter that much in the long term, because the winning dinosaur gains half the star rating of the losing dinosaur. So one of these two is going to end up with a big boost with star rating. Oh, hang on. Oh, they're calling it quits. Well, that's never going to last. There are four ceratosaurs in this pen, so they're going to come to blows again soon. It looks like these two are squaring off against each other as well. I wonder if this is actually realistic behaviour. I mean, we'll never know for sure, unless somebody actually incubates a dinosaur for real and makes them fight each other, but... Well, if you look at other predators, for example, you look at a wolf pack, there's one alpha male and a whole bunch of beaters, and the beaters have a distinct pecking order, and they fight amongst themselves. Although with wolves it doesn't necessarily always come to fighting, but they play dominance games with each other to establish the pecking order. And this determines the order in which they feed, for example, so it's not unusual to see some of the lower status males in a pack of wolves competing against each other for dominance in order to, you know, get the first bite from the deer's ass, for example, or if not the first, then at least to get ahead of other less dominant males. And this seems to be more or less exactly what we're seeing here. The two most dangerous predators have been squaring off against each other to establish who's the alpha female, since all of these dinosaurs are sterile females, the theory being that if they escaped into the wild they wouldn't be able to breed. And these two are squaring off to see who gets first pick of whatever's left over. Oh, hang on a minute. Are they going to go for it? Because Ceratosauro 1 is almost certainly going to come off... Yeah, they are. Oh, well, this is actually pretty good. Because number two is probably not going to win against number three. Number three is the later model. It's had more genetic tinkering. And number one is definitely not going to win a fight against number four. In fact, yeah, he doesn't really look like he's interested in those odds. He's, uh, or she rather, turned her back and is wandering away. Although, uh, he's having to think about it. You see, you could intervene. You can stack the odds by basically jumping into a ranger jeep and using the dark and to heal the one that you want to will but oh we've got a fatality dinosaur down we have a winner now are they still going to keep going for it over here because now there are only three live ceratosaurs in this enclosure so the social pressure is no longer on are they going to call it quits nope <laughs> oh no no they're not having any of that so we have two victors Right, I should probably dispose of the bodies. <laughs> but let's go and call in the sky cranes to get rid of the dead dinosaurs. And let's have a look at Ceratosauro 4, who seems to be quite pleased with herself after that performance and now has a star rating of 191. Now, you may have noticed that the overall park star rating has actually dropped down below four stars. You are going to take a short term hit. To your park's star rating if you do this because the guests don't really like seeing decomposing dinosaur you're going to take a big hit to your welfare rating there you go minus 88 however don't worry about it because these idiots <laughs> have very very short attention spans sure right now they're all over twitter 
posting pictures of the shocking conditions that your dinosaurs have to live under. But a minute from now, they're all going, oh, look, a picture of a cat eating a cheeseburger. <laughs> right, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Your welfare rating will recover as long as you dispose of the bodies and you keep the feeders stocked with food. In fact, the star rating is already starting to creep up. Now, admittedly, before we did have four ceratosaurs in the park with reasonable star ratings, and now we have two ceratosaurs in the park with pretty good star ratings, so there's not a huge amount of difference. But we can easily stick another two ceratosaurs into the park and have them fight it out. And then we'll have two or three ceratosaurs in the park with very, very good star ratings. Before we do that though, earlier on, was one of the reputation rewards with, I think it was the security division, uh, I received access to dig sites that contained Dracorex fossils. Now normally you'd think, oh this is good, it's another new dinosaur you can introduce to the park to increase the variety rating. But these things are just more trouble than they're worth. The only reason I went ahead and incubated any of them was that I had a mission from the science, uh, sorry, security division to go ahead and incubate two of them. But I will be getting rid of these little buggers as soon as I possibly can, because they're just more trouble than they're worth. You can't just have one Dracorex, because they require company from their own species, so you require a minimum of two. And they don't like sharing an enclosure with too many other dinosaurs. So you start introducing these things into the park, and it actually restricts the variety of other dinosaurs that you can have in the same pen with them. And also, they're a bit crap, and they have a pretty bad star rating. I introduce one Dracorex into the park, and it's immediately unhappy because it's the only Dracorex in the park. I introduce another Dracorex into the park, and now it's happy that it has another Dracorex to play with, but the population bar is right up to the upper limit. So I can't introduce any further dinosaurs of any type into this enclosure, or the Dracorex are going to start kicking off and trying to tear the fence down and escape. They're really just more trouble than they're worth. However, completing this security mission has now unlocked access to the security center, which is an operations facility that you can build in your park, and you gain money from it every minute based on your reputation with the security division. I was worried there for a minute, but you came through for the entertainment division. The contract to increase our attendance is closed, and that is your doing. Boom! I really hate that guy. He's such a pretentious, insincere, hipster arsehole. Anyway, we now have four ceratosaurs in the same enclosure once again. And you know what happens when we do that. Contestant number six has a rating of 147, fresh out of the incubator, but he is the star of the show. Contestant number four, who has almost a 200 rating. This time around, though, I don't think I'm going to leave things up to chance. I think I'm going to stack the odds in my favour. Since these are all basically as genetically modified as I can get away with, they're all the equal of each other in a fight. So, well, that means contestant number six, with a rating of 147, has just as much of a chance of winning a fight as contestant number four, with a rating of 191. And I'd rather contestant number four won the fight. So... In order to make sure that happens, I'm going to be fixing the results by jumping into a ranger jeep and using the dart gun to heal whichever of the two dinosaurs involved in any fight I want to be the winner. Two dinosaurs walk into a bar. One has a rating of 200, the other has a rating of 150. First dinosaur spills the other dinosaur's point. Dinosaurs have a fight. Dinosaur with a rating of 200 wins now has a rating of 275, but if the dinosaur with a rating of 150 wins, only has a rating of 250. And anyway, fair fights over suckers. Right, here's number four. This is the 191 rating dino. Ah, oh, great. She's fighting the winner of the other previous fight. Understood. Not ideal, but on the bright side, if four wins this fight, and she will because I'm healing her, she's going to end up with one hell of a boost to her star rating. And I am so very, very close to having a five-star park. Oh, and it looks like we've just completed an entertainment mission for Isaac the Arsehole. I can't thank you enough, which means I'm not going to try. Yeah, that's right, Isaac. If something's hard to do, it's not worth doing, is it? Oh, I really hate this guy. 
Oh, actually, this could be a spot of good luck. Because the initial standoff between a pair of carnivals, large carnivals at least, well, not the Indominus Rex, <laughs> but at least the Ceratosaurs, uh, isn't immediately fatal. At least round one appears to mostly be down to posturing. So I can leave those two alone, because he's kicking off over on the other side of the lake. Because that is not going to be a fight to the death. And maybe three and four will pick fresh victims for round two. Treatment. Yeah, her health's as high as I can boost it at the moment. Oh, we do have a fatality. They did fight it out to the death. Well, this might actually be good news. Contestant number five now has a star rate in the 220. Which, well, with one dead ceratosaur in this enclosure, three and four are probably not going to kick it off again. So they retain their star rating. And I've taken a slight hit to my dinosaur star rating overall, thanks to the welfare penalty, but I do have a pair of Huyangosaurus ready to go. And once that welfare penalty recovers, this may be enough to tip me up to five stars. Give it a minute and everybody will get over pictures of dead ceratosaurs in their Twitter feed and will start sharing memes of Flamu getting triggered over something his teammates have done in a World of Warships livestream. And everything will be hunky-dory once again. And sure enough, before too long, all of the chicken lizard's rights activists get over themselves and Jeff Goldblum arrives to tell us what an all-round good egg and snappy dresser we are. You appear to have achieved the highest rating that you can on Isla Matanceros. I'll try not to sound too surprised, Jeff. I am a professional here, after all. I do this for a living, you know. We're not quite done, however. We still haven't raised our reputation to the maximum with the science and entertainment divisions. Unfortunately, that means listening to Isaac again. But not for long, because we only have one unlock remaining with the entertainment division. And that's for the Sinoceratops genome, which is going to be very useful on our next island. He wants us to release a Sinoceratops. You see why I hate this guy? <laughs> I have to raise my reputation with his division to a sufficient level to unlock the Sinoceratops, and in order to do that, he gives me a contract to incubate and release a... I, I really hope he dies soon. <laughs> Never mind. You will find that occasionally. They'll... Earlier on, they gave me a mission to increase my park's rating to five stars. This was before my park even had a one-star rating. <laughs> I was like, nope, I'm not accepting that contract. That'll take about a day to complete. Uh, you can have up to three contracts running at any one time. So don't worry about refusing contracts that are just too hard at the current stage of the game. Just refuse them, and then every minute... I mean, they will keep offering Did you contracts every now and then, but every minute you can just go in and request a new contract from the division of your choice. So if they keep giving you Mission Impossible, <laughs> just refuse, be patient, come back a minute later, and they'll probably give you something that's a little bit more manageable. Like, take a photograph of two Ceratosaurs, for example. Easy. Now this path could do with straightening out. There we go, that's a bit better. And that really is it from here on in. It's just a question of accepting contracts from the divisions of your choice in order to raise your reputation with them to the sufficient level required to gain the last of the unlocks. Let's actually take a look at what we're still working on. Oh, you'll never guess what. Some bloodthirsty arsehole has sneaked a fourth ceratosaur into the carnivore pen again. And you'll never guess what the ceratosaurs did. <laughs> Who are these two? Contestant number five. He hasn't actually won any fights. So I don't really want him to win this one. Ceratosaur number four, on the other hand, is the champion. So we're going to heal up number four. Sorry, number five. It's not that I don't like you or anything, but, well, you're a loser. <laughs> And losers lose. That's why we call them losers. 
Come on over here. It's number six. Yeah, six is a winner. We'll heal her up, although she's winning this fight anyway. There we go. What are the other two? It's not one of them's pussy now. Oh no, no, no. Are they kicking off in the forest? No, they're just showing off. Right, these two look like they're settling down for the end of round one. Oh no, they're still going for it. Do we have a fatality? Not quite. Let's make sure the one that I want to win. Yep, there it is. Oh god, that looks brutal. Yeah. Yeah. You're not getting up from that one. Let's get a picture. This might be worth something. That's not bad, actually. $48,000. If I hadn't already just taken a picture of a Ceratosaur, that might have been a $100,000 photo. And there it is. Final reputation unlock with the Entertainment Division. Cyanoceratops genome fossil dig sites unlocked. And in a shock development, contestant number six is now my star attraction with a dinosaur rating of 315. Poor old contestant number four, still on 191, peaked early yesterday's news. And we don't like to talk about contestant number five. She's a bit simple. We have to keep reminding her, pants first, then shoes. Yeah. At this stage of proceedings, here are the scores on the doors. We've unlocked everything for security and entertainment. We just have two remaining unlocks for the science division. The science center and the Crichtonosaurus. Sounds a bit made up. I want to take this Hang on a minute. Which means you want to take it Isn't Michael Crichton the guy that wrote the book, Jurassic Park? Yes, he is. They have actually named a dinosaur after him. They're not making this up for the game. The Crichtonosaurus actually exists. Or you know, did exist, like 75 billion years ago. But they have found the fossils in China, and it was named in honour of the author of Jurassic Park, Michael Crichton, which is kind of funny when you think about it, because the Crichtonosaurus didn't exist in the Jurassic era. It's from the Cretaceous period, <laughs> which is what happened after the Jurassic period. So anything between 145 to 66 million years ago. Incidentally, if you let your reputation with any of the three divisions stagnate, this sort of shit happens. Somebody from the science division, pissed off that we haven't been lavishing attention on them, has just sabotaged one of the power stations. Now, we can send a ranger team over there and reboot the power station. No harm, no foul. If they rebooted all of the gates, on the other hand, <laughs> <laughs> which can happen, we would have three very, very hungry ceratosaurs helping themselves to mobile Happy Meals. And I don't think we've built any shelters. <laughs> so that was a narrow escape. Luckily, the system has been restored. There were no fatalities. And we are working on improving our reputation with the science division so we can get that Crichtonosaurus genome unlocked. And that ain't going to take too long. That contract to increase our attendance numbers. What can I say? You did it. Well, I guess I just did say it. Hooray! There it is. That's Isla Matanceros complete without ever leaving Isla Matanceros, which is a lot harder to do than it sounds because you don't have access to any fossils, you don't have access to any upgrades, you don't have access to anything that isn't unlocked on Isla Matanceros. On the bright side, while this was not the most efficient way of going about playing the game, it is far more efficient to just unlock the next island, Isla Muerte, go there, get what you can from that place, and then come back to Isla Matanceros with more things available for you to play with. This does at least mean that we're going to get a bit of a head start on the next island, Isla Muerte. Because now we can take the Crichtonosaurus genome, the Cynoceratops genome, we have restaurants, we have all kinds of facilities that we wouldn't have unlocked here if we hadn't stayed with it and made sure that we ticked all of the boxes before we moved on. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video, so I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you're all having a great weekend. 
I hope Sweden haven't beaten England yet in the football because let's face it, the last time we beat Sweden at anything was in the War of 1810 and we only won that in a technicality. <laughs> so fingers crossed. And as always, take care and I'll catch you next time.